Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in church this morning? Are you glad to be in church this morning? I welcome you to TCP Life. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Hallelujah. Okay, let's listen to the first testimony. Hallelujah. I am giving this testimony to glorify God for the great deliverance of my eight mother from the hands of kidnappers. Precisely in the early hours of Sunday, the 19th of June, 2016, at about 6.30 a.m., while my family was getting ready to come for service, I got a call from my cousin's wife that my 77-year-old mother had just been kidnapped and whisked away by some armed men from our house in the village. This was a great shock to my entire family as none of us is a politician and thus do not have the flamboyance that should lure kidnappers. However, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Christ came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. It is that abundant life in the world that the enemy was seeking to steal. I immediately notified Pastor Nkechi, my man of God, who prayed in few words and assured me in simple terms that God is faithful and my mom will be released safe and sound. We were foolish enough to yield to the demands of the kidnappers because of the initial panic and the enemy of our mom but as the enemy is a liar and the father of lies that served no purpose and my mom was kept for a grilling three weeks in captivity during this period the enemy traumatized and taunted my family with threats and the worst pictures he was able to paint Aiming for us to lose our faith in God, thank God we remembered our identity in Christ and went back to the scriptures and found that God's word covers everything. Exodus 21 16 says, Anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death, whether the victim has been sold or is still in the kidnapper's possession. Deuteronomy 27 verse 7 also says, if someone is caught kidnapping a fellow Israelite and treating or selling them as a slave, the kidnapper must die. You must purge the evil from among you. NIV. It dawned on us more than ever that God was very clear on the crime of kidnapping and completely hates the act and we were resolute that we would not compromise any further but our mother was coming out by only God's great deliverance. We got more assurance from Isaiah 49, 24 to 26, where God declared, Can plunder be taken from warriors, or captives be rescued from the fears? But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from, the, from warriors, and plunders and plunder retrieved from the fears 
I will contend with those who contend with you and your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will, they will be drunk in their own blood as with wine then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Brethren, this scripture became a mantra. We declared it, we sang it, we proclaimed it morning, noon, and night. Suffice to say, that not all members of my family identified with our stance to trust God. And we therefore had disagreements alongside our faith work. However, to the glory of God, who watches over his word to bring it to pass, the security agents broke into the camp of the kidnappers and brought out my aged mother with no smell of smoke. A woman that has a history of high blood pressure came out with her blood pressure at the normal. At the normal level. She was traumatized, but God is doing a quick work and she is gradually regaining her confidence and strength glorifying god for her deliverance the hunter himself has become the hunted and i feel sorry for them when i remember the word of isaiah 49 26 praise el lemoshot the god of deliverance Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My name is Mabel Okoju. Thank God for his goodness upon my life, especially in the area of health, financial provision, and my children's education. During one of the testimony services in 2004, a woman testified of how God helped her and her children had graduated from the university with her last daughter still in school. I claimed that testimony for myself, thanking God for the manifestation. Now, today I am a proud mother of two sons who are graduates. I can say they were true schools by God's divine and abundant grace. And now my last son just gained admission into the university. From August 2004, I have been battling with health challenge, regularly visiting the hospital with no visible improvement. In July 2015, I saw Pastor Nkechi and she prayed with me and encouraged me to stand firm in the word of God. Days and months went by, for the symptom, but the symptoms grew worse and so severe that I always had seizures day in and day out. This made me almost lose faith. But each time I would keep, I would keep on declaring God's word concerning my healing, even when more sicknesses began to to emanate. God's undiluted and incorruptible word have heard, I have heard over years from this pulpit helped me in this situation. The son who you are to me, Pastor Kechi, and it was what I meditated on daily, and this made me my faith grew stronger. After my visit to the hospital on 5th of August 2015, I decided I wasn't going back to the hospital anymore to avoid losing my faith in the word of God. So I stopped the appointment and started feeling, feeding myself more and more with the word of God. I registered and started taking exercise classes and changed my eating habits. This made me lose a lot of weight since, since I had gained so much, so much of weight 
when I had the health challenge. In November 2015, during the healing service, my case was mentioned, and my faith, and by faith, I stood up immediately and received it. Since then, things, things turned around for the better. Brethren, I am here today, healed, I am healthy, no more seizure, and the high cholesterol level is gone forever. Indeed, the word of God works wonders in marvelous ways. I appreciate our man, our mother in Israel, the Joshua of our time, and our associate pastor who stood by my family and me all the while for their prayers and encouragement. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Church, good morning. My name is Mrs. Chioma Ochia. I am reading this testimony on behalf of my daughter, Isioma Ochia. I, go, I got admitted to my first choice college in 2014, right, right after I graduated from high school and was supposed to start in January 2015. However, it didn't work out due to some issues I had getting my documents. I ended up not going and taking a gap year. At the very last minute, close to the application deadline, I discovered another college I wanted to attend and applied. I discovered another college I wanted to attend and applied. However, I was, enabled, I was unable to get a scholarship because I had applied at the very last minute and all the priority students who applied first had gotten all the scholarship opportunities. The fees were very high, but my parents paid the full fees for my first year. I missed the Naira to dollar exchange rate while believing that I'll get a scholarship in my second year. While in school, I applied for as many scholarships as I could, as I could find, regardless of the amount offered. I found out about an academic scholarship, um, about an academic, academic scholarship opportunity for already admitted students that would apply to my next year of study. It was done after the first semester, so they could judge you based on your grades for that semester. I aimed at getting a 4-0 GPA. I also maintained through that first semester that while I was putting in work and effort, my efforts will be exceedingly crowned by God's favor. I made sure to be conscious of God's favor and not get myself worked up over any situation. When I get breakthroughs that would make my friends say, wow, you're so lucky. My mom would always tell me, you're not lucky, you're favored. The first semester grades were released over the Christmas break and I made a 4.0 GPA, which means I made an A in every course I took. I applied for the scholarship, wrote the essays, and provided all the documents that were required of me in January after the Christmas break. People I, people I knew that applied as, as well had started getting emails back telling them they had gotten their scholarship, but I didn't hear anything. One day in April, the thought of my scholarship filled my, my mind, and I decided to go to the financial aid website directly to see if they had posted an award letter there. I checked and saw that I had gotten the scholarship and the award letter had been on the site for a few days. I went to the scholarship office the next day and they told me that because I got an academic scholarship that I would also get a further bonus of paying, of paying what Texas State res residents pay instead of the absolutely expensive international fee. Basically, my fees would, would be slashed in half, and an extra $2,000, which had been awarded to me, would also be deducted. I was overjoyed and forgot about the other scholarships I applied for. I thought it couldn't get any better than that, 
However, a few weeks later, I got an email from the school's housing office saying that I had been awarded another scholarship for my, for my accommodation for the next year. I thank God for going above and beyond my expectations when it was most needed. The exchange rate went up and my school fees decreased. This whole year in school has been a miracle and an evidence of God's persistent favor. Praise the Lord. I am next in line for a miracle. I must receive my own today. I really need this job. God, I'm ready to receive a word. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastor. Who is expectant this morning? I am. Why don't you welcome someone by your side? Tell them that they are in for the supernatural. You are in, you are in, in for the supernatural. Turn to the other person and say they are in for the supernatural. I try so hard to focus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Praise God forever for him. But why am I struggling to stay connected? Voices in my head, Glory. screaming, this morning, shouting, guilt accusing, oh, yes, emotions yeah. blaming, my eyes criticizing Hallelujah. and judging. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are expectant this morning, shout glory. Shout scared. Glory hmm. Shout glory to God. Tinted hair. Why? Shout hallelujah. Chatting on his phone. Hallelujah. How? Ushers, please stop them. Now declare to yourself that hmm. I am here for this. That couple looks like they just had a quarrel. I always knew they are not compatible. Distractions. Hey, sis, do you remember that usher we saw at a club? Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah 60, from verse 1 to 3. I read, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Yeah. Mm. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. Amen. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Yeah. Amen. And the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one point. God's word is the supernatural. Hallelujah. Friends. Hands are lifted and I join in worship. Encourage us. I'm here to charge us up. Amen. I really don't know what the situation Amen to what? is to you. I ask myself. I don't know what you are going through. Distractions. I don't know the issue. Oh, the I forgot to turn off my data. But I'm here this morning. Facebook. To tell you that ah. is here to do you good. <laughs> Who tagged me? God is. Oh wow! Look at Sarah's beautiful daughter. Yeah. Hmm, nice picture. That is his mind for you. Funke, they took a picture of us and put on the church Facebook page. This church photographers, Sha. <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful. Distraction. If it's for a job or a business, receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, if you are here trusting God for your spouse, receive your miracle in Jesus' name. I receive. If it's for a, if it's for clarity of purpose. Receive God's wisdom and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Now, wow. God Some people just good. have an attitude. Point two. Believe God for the supernatural. Please, let me ignore her and pay Hallelujah. attention. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, it's getting dark. It must be Hallelujah. raining somewhere. Did I close the room God windows? God is here to do you good. Amen. Did I take in the clothes? To do oh, you good. That is his the business. The road will get worse. And I wore a new pair of shoes. Why today? Sister, please, do you have an extra pair of slippers? I think I do. I'll check my bag after the word. The word? Oh, the word is still going on. Let's take the last point. What? Oh, I'm so excited about Last it. point? Oh, How many points are in this message? Where was I all this while? Your distraction. Supernatural. Oh, Father, forgive me. I know it's never late for you. What is faith? You still have a word for me. I know. The substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. 
Faith is your link to the supernatural. Hallelujah. Oh no, I slept off. Now what is faith? Everyone is screaming and shouting and I was sleeping. The substance of things hoped for. Oh, it's true. I didn't sleep well last night. What do you say? Had to have that important discussion with my spouse. I hope he really understood what I was saying. Look at what God has said. Anyway, let me get this last point. We'll revisit that matter later. Your situation, what you want it to be. And this weather is so cool. Until it comes to Just calls for sleep. Distractions. <laughs> Therefore, in the midst of seeming hopelessness, there is no hopelessness. Yes. For there is always a way out. Hallelujah. The situation is subject to change. Yes. For the word of God is eternal. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Oh, let's give him praise. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, Jehovah. Oh, we give you all the praise. Oh, hallelujah to your holy name. Hallowed be unto your holy name. Be thou exalted, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. There's a lady here. You have come with an expectation for a job. God says to tell you that you will receive a call this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Yes. His faithfulness is here this morning. Yes. It is here to do you good. Amen. Hallelujah to God's name. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you, thank you for your word. Blessed be your holy name, Jehovah. Is there anyone here that wants to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior? You know, this is the first step in walking in the supernatural. Yes, you can indicate by raising your hand. Oh yes, you can stand to your feet, please. You can come towards me. I will pray with you and I will also pray for you. Father, we thank you. Praise God. Now lift up your hands. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. From today, I surrender completely to you. I surrender completely to you. Thank you for making me your child. Thank you for making me your child. I am born again. I am born again. Thank you for receiving me into your family. Thank you for receiving me into your In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your child who has accepted you this morning. Thank you for she will never depart from this declaration this morning. Father, we thank you for your word is yea and amen. Blessed be your holy name, Jehovah. Praise God. You may follow the usher, please. Thank you very much. Let's let's welcome her. Let's welcome her into the family the of God. The service is over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's I still feel empty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, what was the topic Hallelujah. of the message? Hallelujah. Distractions. Okay, bye. What was the prophecy I gave a loud amen to? Sister, expect the call. Ah, now wow. Okay, please call me in the morning. My phone will be switched off by noon. Eh? <laughs> or is she talking about something different? Why do I feel like a fish out of water? Distraction it is. She was distracted the whole time. Brethren, when we come to church, we need to stay focused on the world. Because God needs our full attention when he speaks. That way, we will hear the word, we will receive it, and we will have our manifestation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Right. My name is Ifani Mbatog. <laughs> Praise God. God has been so faithful to me and my family 
and we have experienced the manifested world in various ways and manners this year. I want to testify of how God came through for us by intervening in my elder sister's home. Incidentally, this happens to be one of my prayer points at the beginning of the year when we were asked by our pastor to submit three prayer points. My elder sister has been married for nine years now, but she had barely known peace in her home. She has five children, all girls. And because of the importance most African cultures place on a male child, she was put under immense pressure to have a male child. Again, the fact that the husband is the only child of the parents aggravated the whole situation. So, in a bid to have a male child, because of the pressure she faced, she ended up giving birth to girls. This gave the whole family a great concern as she was constantly persecuted and taunted by her in-laws, especially the father-in-law. Things got seemingly worse as her husband, who initially pretended that it didn't matter to him, suddenly turned against her. He now started having extramarital affairs without caring whose ox is God, keeping late nights, barely providing food for his family, always persecuting my sister to the point of physical abuse and constantly threatening to throw her out of her home. After the fifth girl in 2014, we strongly advised my sister to give herself some time and seek medical advice if she must take in again. This she gladly ob obliged. However, early in the year, my sister called me on phone and was crying. I tried to calm her down and asked what the problem was. She told me that she had missed her period. What? I shouted. I was visibly angry with her. However, she kept on crying, telling me that it was a mistake, that she never intended that. When I sensed deep anguish and confusion within her, I knew that there was more to it than met the eyes. I told her I would call her later in the evening as I was on the road when she called. When I called later that evening, she told me that her husband asked her to choose between the pregnancy and her home. In fact, that he dropped 10,000 naira for her to use to abort the pregnancy and threatened to throw her out if he returned that evening and she had not aborted the pregnancy. This marked the beginning of terrible persecution for her and the girls. As God will have it, this was the week of our first testimony service of the year. During the testimony service that Sunday, I was totally overwhelmed by God's goodness and what he can do. I was literally shedding tears in awe of God and his faithfulness in our lives generally in TCC, in my seat. And I wasn't necessarily thinking about my sister's case at that time. There and then, the Holy Spirit started ministering to me so strong that I tangibly felt God's presence where I sat. He asked me to call my sister and encourage her and ask her not to dare think of tampering with the pregnancy. When I got home that day, I quickly called my sister and encouraged her. I reminded her that babies are blessings from God and that God's blessings make rich and add no sorrow. I told her that she shouldn't dare tamper with the pregnancy. This is how she became very strong through it all, despite the persecution. To the glory of God, two weeks ago, Tuesday, 27th August 2016, precisely at about 7.30 p.m., my sister was delivered of a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> baby and mother are kicking fine, and the whole family, including her husband, has been thrown into wild, joyous celebration. I give God all the glory. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Emmanuel Obochi. 
Sometime in the second half of 2015, my wife and I decided it was time for me to retire from my job after 15 years of service to the bank. At this time, I was a manager of a branch at Worry. Upon my transfer to Worry in 2015, I did a proper handover and took my successor to as many of my customers as possible for formal introductions. This, however, was not done for me in Worry, as the person running the branch before I got there left around um, December, the previous year. Needless to say, I took over a branch that was seriously challenged, both in terms of business and staffing, and I prayerfully worked towards putting my new branch on the right track. After I had given the bank notice of my retirement, I was surprised when I started receiving queries concerning three loan accounts in my previous branch, which had become due for repayment, but were still in debit, totaling over 60 million naira. Out of these three accounts, only one had an issue while I was still in the branch because the account officer did not handle the account well. And I made sure I included it in my handover notes for proper follow-up and resolution. The two other accounts were running perfectly well by the time I left the branch. I discussed this with my regional manager, who advised me to do a detailed report of what happened in those accounts and sent to our credit inspection unit with him in copy. I did as was advised, and when I received no further memos concerning this, I felt that was the end of the issue. I believe it was on the strength of this report that my regional manager signed off my exit form. After I left the bank effective January 2016, by then all my system rights had been withdrawn. I continued following up with the Human Resources Department for the payment of my retirement benefits, only to be told that I was yet to be released by the Credit Inspection Unit, the same unit I sent a report to that never responded. They now insisted that I had to recover the entire money before they would sign off my exit form. All my explanations to them did not help, and someone even spoke to me and made insinuations in writing that I possibly connived with the customers to steal the bank's money. I had no other alternative than to start chasing the customers to pay down these loans, and that started a period of darkness and gloom for me. The only option I had was to bring the matter to God through personal prayers, family prayers, where my wife and I prayed prayers of agreement, and also our FOG. Though the matter seemed so hopeless, I found solace in God. I reminded him that all through my years as a bank manager, I committed my branches to him as the one in charge and not me. And so, he had to deliver me from this. Standing on scriptures as, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established, Job 22:28. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 18, 18. I began to make pronouncements concerning these loans. I declared that the customers would not have peace until they had repaid the loans. I declared that no part of my retirement benefits would be used to repay customers' loans, and that my retirement benefits were coming to me speedily. My wife was also a source of encouragement to me as she told me firmly that the bank had no choice but to pay me what was due me. At some point, I had thought bombs that I was being punished for my negligence in the disbursement of these loans. This may have happened in one of those accounts, as the account officer begged me and I approved the disbursement of part of the customer's loan before the fulfillment of all the conditions precedent to draw down. However, when I had pastors say that, Sorry, when I had pastors say in church one day that God forgives and restores us even when we have made mistakes, my faith was rekindled. We reported one of the customers to the EFCC, and that began a long visit to the EFCC for me, so much so that many of them got to know who, me, who I was. God, who surrounds us with, with his favor as a shield, granted me favor before the EFCC officials. Worthy of note is the fact that the police which, of course, make up part of the EFCC, see any banker involved in any form of fraud as guilty until proven innocent. 
but that was not my case, as they were on my side and brought out their time and resources to get this customer who at that time could not be reached. It could only be God. At some moments, when it seemed as if I had reached the end of the rope, God would orchestrate something to show me he was still in charge of my matter. An example was when this same customer, who we had tried severally to reach without success, who the EFC's officials were considering involving the Nigeria Immigration Service and the Interpol to get, called me using another line and told me he was still in the country. I immediately gave the number he used in reaching me to the EFCC and they invited him and he came. It could only be God. While this was going on, God also answered our prayer in another area, my wife and I were believing him for a miracle. That is a testimony for another day. After a series of meetings between this customer, the bank, the EFCC, and me, the customer made an initial payment of two thirds of the total sum he was owing, with a firm promise to pay the rest by the end of the year. Before this time, there were so many attempts on the part of the branch and the bank to frustrate all my efforts, as they would agree on one thing one day, only to say another thing the next. The customer would not give me any information as he would refer me to the branch saying they were my people. And the bank would not give me information saying I should go back to the customer. The EFCC officials saw this and threatened to back out of the case. They made it clear that the only reason they stayed on was because of me. It could only be God. The second customer who was owing close to half of the total sum outstanding against me assured me that though the branch did not handle his account well after I was transferred, which led to a lot of charges to his account, that he would pay down the loan to ensure I was not punished unjustly. And this he did, as he paid down over 70% of his indebtedness while the balance was restructured using the title documents to his property which had been with the bank since his loan was approved, and which by the way was worth over 300 million as security. The funniest of this was that the third loan, which I was asked to recover, was disbursed after I had moved out of that branch to my new branch. And it was not until after eight months of non-repayment that I was told by the account officer that the customer had defaulted in the repayment, eight months after I had been moved to a new branch. This was a clear case of lack of monitoring by the account officer, yet they transferred the responsibility to me. All efforts to hang these loans on me and deprive me of my retirement benefits did not work, as this fight against me was clearly a fight against God, which no man could or can win. Eventually, by the middle of May 2016, after the repayments and restructuring of the outstanding balances were made, the bank had no option than to release me and pay me all my retirement benefits. My prayer... My prayer and confession that no part of my retirement benefit would be used to repay any loan came to pass. It could only be God. As I passed through this storm, at some point not knowing what would happen to me, God did not let go of me. He took me through it step after step, and I have come out of it knowing more than ever before that there is no situation that we find ourselves in that he's not able to bring us out of and make us even stronger. I return all the glory to him for winning this battle for me and my family. I also appreciate our pastors here in TCC for feeding us with the undiluted word that assures us of victory. Praise God. My name is Lolia Maiba. I'm reading this testimony on behalf of my husband, Domine Maiba. This is indeed the year of the manifested word, and I can confidently say that God's glory has been on display in my life and that of my family. God has done great things for me regarding my career growth and I do not take them lightly. I'm here to satisfy of God's goodness in my life. Earlier this year, I really had a strong desire to leave my company as I, was felt, as I felt it was time to move on. A couple of challenges I faced prompted this decision and I dis discussed them with my wife. One of the things I kept saying to myself was that I was on a training ground and at the appropriate time, I will move on to the next phase that God will have me be. Within this same period, 
I did a couple of trainings, professional exams related to my field, and just generally developed myself as I waited. This was part of my faith, as, faith in expression. On the 9th of May, 2016, I received the hard, copies, hard copy certificates of one of the professional exams I wrote, and I was really very excited. What came to my mind after I received the certificates was that it was time to start searching for jobs relating my field and apply, relating to my field, sorry, and apply. Without hesitation, I opened my browser to comment search for the job. But while it was opening, I noticed that an email dropped into my official mailbox. I swapped immediately to check the new email, and to my surprise, it was an email from the HR of the mother company of my present company, stating that I was considered for a role and I was requested to use the job number and title in the body of the email to apply for the role if I was interested. What? If I'm interested? With excitement, I said within myself, is this one a question or an answer? I mean, God showed me that he already had things in motion and he was orchestrating events in the background to bring my heart's desire into reality. I used the details in the email and applied for the role. And I also notified my present company that I was interested in a role in our mother company and I had applied for it. This notification didn't really go down with the management of my company as I was made to understand that I needed to get some form of approval and efforts were also made to see if I would change my mind. I discussed a couple of bottlenecks that surrounded this move with Pastor Nkechi and in her usual way, without stress, she said something very simple, but very powerful. She said, my son, if God has made this job available for you, you will get it. With this word, I had peace, and I didn't allow the occurrences that followed regarding my move to distract me. My colleagues, close friends, and family who were aware of the situation also encouraged me. With the peace I felt within, I focused on my work as usual and did everything with a greater sense of ownership and with excellence. In June, I was scheduled for three phone interviews with two executives and HR. They went well, and it appeared to me as if it was one of a chat. It was more of a chat to get to know who they were considering. I praised God afterwards and just remained expectant. During the period week in July this year, I was not in town, but on site. But I followed up on all the prayer points and prophecies on our website. One of the prophecies by Pastor Nkechi I held on to was that in the day of his power, men will be willing to favor me. The next day, I repeat, the next day, which was the last day of the prayer week, I received an offer of employment. This was a sudden manifestation of the word, and I was overjoyed to say the least, as indeed men willing and unwilling had favored me. Something interesting I found out within the process was that three candidates, including myself, were considered for the role. The other two candidates were already in the mother company and they both declined the offer. One selflessly saying that God will give him his job and the other said he felt restless about it. I also understood that the role was later opened globally for people outside the organization to apply after the other two candidates had declined. This was for me very surprising and it further proved that God had reserved this job for me and in the day of his power, men were willing. God be praised because all of this happened in an unusual way and in a period where a lot of companies had been downsizing due to economic situation in the country. I want to thank our pastors for always remaining sensitive to God and giving his word in due season. Above all, I thank God for the manifestation of his goodness in my life. I believe he has given flesh to my seed sown in the areas that matter to me. And I will keep sowing my seeds knowing that this is just the beginning. Praise God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> my name is Gift Wokocha. I'm here to share the two testimony on God protection over my life. My first testimony goes to us. In the year 2015, on the 11th day of April, I stood in for election into the River State House of Assembly in Obayebi Mandoni Constituency 1 under the umbrella of All Progressive Congress. Before any election will take place in any constituency or state, the candidate should be allowed 
to win the support from the electorate. But this was not the case. Every attempt to campaign for support was frustrated by fully armed hoodlums who are from the opposition. On the 28th of January 2014, I went home to receive my flag, having won the primary election of my party. That day was a weekend, Friday, to, to be precise. The Guba candidate was to come home with the state party chairman to hand over flags to the respective flag bearers of each constituency in the LGA. So I decided to go home on Friday to prepare for the following day, being Saturday. However, something happened. I was in my compound up until 9.30 p.m. in the night at Omok when suddenly I became so uncomfortable. I listened to the Spirit of God who said I should go back to Port Harcourt immediately. I did not object. I quickly informed the mobile security men that came with me that we are going back to Port Harcourt that night. They were all shocked, including the driver, because that was not the initial arrangement. We quickly drove back to Port Harcourt at about 11.30 p.m. that night. Armed men who thought I was in the house surrendered my house at Omok. They took over the entire premises, battered the whole house and gate with bullets. The young Megad who, who take care of the gate ran away and hid behind a pile of molded blocks I kept by the side of the premises. According to the Megad, he said that the number of people that came for the operation that night was so many because they believe they may have a confrontation with the security agent that came home with me. By 6.30 a.m. the following morning, I decided to go back to Omok to prepare for the flag that would be handed over to me. On reaching my compound at Omok, I saw the DPO and the JTF commanders who were baffled over what they saw. The entire premises, including rooms, were littered with bullet, bullet shell that can fill up a small pocket. That was how God saved my life. And the following day, being Saturday, 29th of April, 2014, my flag was handed over to me in the arena. It was God's mercy, grace, and love that saved me that very night, without which it would have been a different story. I thank the Almighty God for his mercy and love towards me. This is my second testimony. On the third day of April, 2015, I went to my, that same, same hometown, Omok, to address my family members and church pastors in our Bible Mandoni local government area, having already scheduled to meet with them on that day. On arrival, I quickly attended my extended family members who were already seated waiting, <coughs> seated waiting for me. When we ended the meeting, I decided to go into the city room with the pastors who were now complete in number. We hardly spent five minutes in the city room when the 60 kVA generator suddenly stopped. I decided to come out and find out the reason behind the sudden stop of the generator. On stepping out of the, of the locked sitting room, my friend who came with me to Omok ran to me and alerted me that there was danger. He said to me it was God who orchestrated the sudden stop of the generator and that he knows nobody would have convinced me to step out of that room when those men of God were there. While he was yet talking, my cousin ran to me and told me to leave immediately, otherwise many souls will perish here in the premises if I don't leave. So without wasting time, I entered the vehicle and asked the driver to leave for Port Harcourt. Not quite five minutes after we left the house, armed men who came just to take away their lives and not mine surrendered the entire premises, surrendered the entire premises. When they could not get at me, they left my house and went to my colleague's house in constituency two that same day, burnt his house, his two vehicles, and threw his knees into the fire, all because of election. They did not end at that. They went straight to the house of one of our major supporters, a former local government chairman, killed him and his two sons, who were graduates, and crippled his last child with some bullets. Nothing has been done to the perpetrator till date. The incident almost repeated itself in Port Harcourt in the year 2016 when we were set for the rerun election. Two weeks to the election, and men who came with six 
tinted SUVs surrounded the front of my house. It was the security boy that, at the gate who spotted them and quickly informed me. I immediately called the DPO who sent the men in operation, his men in operation, to come to my street. It was when they sighted the police van that they all drove out in a convoy without any molestation by the police. That was also how God averted the evil and saved me from the hands of the wicked men. It was the word of God that sustained me and my family in this trying time. I thank God for our covenant of, lo of long life. I thank God for the manifested word in TCC. I also made a point of always keeping in, keeping pastor, the senior pastor, up to date with every development in that period, and her counsel and prayer also guided me. I thank the Almighty God for his mercy that is not like him, that is not like God. If he is for you, no man can be against you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and glorify him? Faithful God. Faithful God he is. Faithful God he is. Glory be to his name. Faithful God he is. Faithful God he is. The God who is more than enough. The God who does exceeding abundantly above. All that we can ever ask, think or imagine. The God who makes a way. And we don't know how he does it. But he does do it all the time. Can we lift our hands and lift our voices to him? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You know, every testimony that has been shared here, there's something that is consistent. At some point or the other, somebody was under pressure. At some point or the other, somebody was under pressure. It looked like you were going to be overwhelmed either by your health, by people after their lives, not your own, by fees that needed to be paid, some form of pressure or the other. But God has a way out of every pressure. Glory be to God. And there's a scripture I just want, that's really the reason I came up. I want to share this scripture. It's a scripture that God shared with us a few weeks ago. And it was such a blessing that I believe it will be a blessing to a lot of us. And I'm going to be reading it from a very interesting version. The CEV version. Many of us may know it in the King James or the New King James. It's Isaiah chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 8 to 10. And I want you to take this scripture as the word of God to you today that will melt away every pressure. You're seated here this morning. There is some pressure. Look at Isioma's testimony. She said the exchange rate was going up and her school fees was, that was amazing. Amazing. When it looks like everything should follow a particular route, something crashes that pressure. The word of God here today is going to tell us what is your guarantee that that pressure will be crushed and you will have peace in the name of Jesus Christ. And you'll be the next one testifying here in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 8 and verse 8. Enemy soldiers will cover Judah like a flood reaching up to your neck but God is with us he will spread his wings and protect our land all of you foreign nations go ahead and prepare for war but you will be crushed get together and make plans but you will fail because God is with us glory be to God be the God. Enemy soldiers will want to overwhelm you. And there you're called Judah, the people of praise. But as you keep praising God, you keep declaring the word of God, which is consistent in every testimony we've heard today. 
we didn't hear of any gymnastics we didn't hear of any magic we didn't hear anybody drank oil we didn't hear anybody based in a drum of water every single person here says this is what the word of the Lord said concerning me and I held on to it and when enemy soldiers want to choke your praise or choke the word remember that God is with you that is your guarantee he says he will spread his wings and protect our land your body is a temple of the living God it is protected because God lives in you the work of your hands is protected because God lives in you victory is your identity victory is your heritage victory is who you are anything that is not victory anything that is not success is alien to your DNA glory be to God glory be to God God is with us church God is with us God is with us in TCC God is with your family God is with my family God is in your marriage God is in everything that concerns you and when it seems listen it doesn't matter how organized and how structured the council taken against you is remember that you have a joker God is with you it's time to stop studying the exchange rate it's time to stop listening to the HR in your office telling you how many people are about to be fired it's time to go deep into the Word of God and remember that if there is a casting down every other place for the children of Israel in TCC there is a lifting up because God is with us lift your hands and give him praise 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 you've meditated on the pressure for too long you've looked at the pressure for too long you've tried to figure out in your brain how it's gonna happen thank God for the choir God will make a way we don't know how just one month that will be the month you're pregnant when everybody else is losing their job that will be when you have two job offers when people are confused and don't know what to do that is when it will be crystal clear what God will have you do even in the midst of the storm church God is with us he's with us in all of his fullness he's with us in all of his identity he's with us as Jehovah Jireh he's with us as Jehovah Rapha he's with us as Jehovah Sikenu he's with us in every covenant manifestation glory be to God and even when enemy soldiers threaten to overwhelm us look your neighbor in the eye and tell them brother sister relax God is with you look them in the eye tell them relax God is with you tell them do you believe it what did they answer you tell them God is with you say it again say it again say it again now let me tell you one more thing to say to them Tell them God is big in you. You didn't say it well. Tell them God is big in you. I want you to say it till it becomes a revelation. Tell them God is big in you. Tell them God is big in you. Tell them again God is big in you. Yeah, do it like this. Say, God is big in me. His righteousness is big in me. His grace is big in me. His healing, glory be to God, is big in me. His peace is big in me. Say it again. God is big in me. If you believe it, give a shout of praise. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Every pressure is melted. Every pressure is melted. Because God is with us. <laughs> Very simple. God is with us. And He is big in us. Bow your heads, please. Bow your heads, please. Bow your heads, please.
sitting here this morning and you're specifically trusting God for a testimony in an area where there is intense pressure you came in this morning with that expectation it may be financial pressure it may be something in your body that the doctors have not told you good news about <laughs> it may be some serious pressure in your family like what if I sister was going through and people may see you and not know how strong this pressure is well today with our corporate faith we're gonna melt that pressure just by our simple <laughs> simple simple declaration <laughs> of faith that God is with you and God is big in you mention that area to God you know what it is I know there's somebody specifically with a negative doctor's report just mention that thing just mention it and father in the name of Jesus for everything that your children <laughs> have mentioned this morning we speak directly to those situations health conditions I address you marriage situation I address you whatever it is financial situation we speak to you whatever it is that you are named we declare today that that pressure melts away in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that God is with you and God is big in you and the bigness of God will overwhelm every negative pressure that is our declaration of faith we say it is so and you will see the manifestation of it in the name of Jesus Christ somebody give a shout of praise give a shout of praise give a shout of praise don't stop you are called Judah Judah they are the people of praise give a shout of praise give a shout of praise that's who Judah is yes give a shout of praise that's who Judah is give a shout of praise Judah a people of praise a people who praise when there's no reason to praise Judah give a shout of praise give a shout of praise I don't know why you're not shouting give a shout of praise 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 I didn't ask you to stop give a shout of praise give a shout of praise give him a shout of praise let your voices be heard God is big 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 in you glory be to God glory be to God never look down on yourself God is big God is big God is big God is big therefore he is bigger than any pressure bigger God is big glory be to God can we bow our heads please bow our heads please glory be to God anybody here you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior you can make that decision today that's the first step to dealing with the pressure you're under you need to come to know Jesus just lift your hand up where you are if you want to do that you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ is a hand up somewhere lift it up high above your head I can't see you though yes God bless you another one here God bless you another one there God bless you yeah Jesus died for you he loves you so much and today you can meet him just rise up on your feet where you are don't look at your left your right just stand up where you are and one day you'll be up here testifying also of the goodness of God and the covenant of God stand up if you raised your hand don't let anybody cheat you out of this 
God can become big in you today. God can become big in you. God bless you. God bless you. Pick up your Bible, your bag, whatever you came with, and just come very quickly here to the front so I can pray with you. Very quickly. Come, come. God is about to become big in you. Bigger than every problem. Glory be to God. Where's the last person? Okay. Come on. Right here. Come on. Quickly. Can we stretch forth our hands to them? Lift up both hands in surrender to Jesus. Say after me. Say, oh God. Mean it from your heart, okay? Say, oh God. Have mercy on me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died and he rose again to save me. Jesus, save me now. Be my Lord and Savior. Today I'm born again and I declare that things have changed and God is big in me now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for each one thank you because they will never turn back from this decision but they will grow in it and see your word manifested in their lives in jesus name amen can we clap for them turn around turn around can you follow this young man